like nobody it's can see it. It's not nearly as fun though. You, then you don't have any lore, all right? Like a typical <laughs> beta. <laughs> lore. <laughs> I don't like my lore. I have I have such bad luck. My lore is <laughs> the Planet Peterson lore is this is not a journey you want to go on. It really isn't. Yeah, but you know, that's normally the best lore. Like you wouldn't wanna, you know, go down the same path Batman did, but Batman is badass. <laughs> yeah, I that's there there is some yeah, truth. But to you're that. a beta. So there is a difference there. Like you Batman's a badass, you're you also start with a B, but it's beta. Beta, yeah. I thought <laughs> man, I thought this was gonna be a really good year, bought the house and a few other things, but it's just <laughs> And I'm I'm hoping it just opens a door where I can do things that just make me more happy. But like, I don't like <laughs> I don't like looking for a job and talking to the FBI and talking to multiple different lawyers and going through all this bullshit. <laughs> yeah, somebody just said the Planet Peterson lore is a Greek tragedy. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. Okay, you're. Uh... I don't know. I'm trying to see this through a bright light. You'll uh, you'll get that lawyer riz. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's supposed to make you feel better or not. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm mostly optimistic about it. The uh, the thing about the Batman lore that's actually kind of funny. Um, do you know who Malcolm Gladwell is? Have you ever read any of his books? Uh, it sounds really familiar, maybe because I was told to in high school. <laughs> Probably. Um, his books are, a few of his books are pretty common in high school and college, but um, Outliers is, I think that might be his best book. David and Goliath is really good too. But he looks at this book, Outliers, and he, he looks at all these people that have accomplished things, and he just asks the question, how? How did they How did they do that? Um and there's a he does this he does this inquiry and it's it's really interesting he he does this weird kind of search where he searches for people who <laughs> it's a really weird metric but he took like the encyclopedia britannica i think and he took all people who had a significant entry which is like at least half a page or something like that mm. and then he did a study by looking at them and he found that like 25% of them lost a parent early in their childhood. And it's like the Batman story or whatever we want to call that. Cuz people that face adversity like that oftentimes end up doing extraordinary things. And I I could remember there's this I forget his name, but there's this <laughs> and Bambi. Yes, <laughs> and <Aunt> Bambi. <laughs> like literally every Disney movie in the 20th century was involved an orphan. Um, but that's um, where you get the best movies, obviously. Pretty much, you know, <laughs> Batman, Bambi, those are the only two movies that have ever been made, but they're they're really good, you yeah. know. I can't I can't think of a single other movie now that now that you put me to the task. <laughs> no, me, me. Well, there's Batman two and Bambi two, I guess yeah. if that counts for anything. Oh, and um, uh, ah, fuck, and snakes on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> snakes on a plane. <laughs> yes, those are the only. Classic. Those are the only five movies, but yeah, there's every this, great um, story starts with a tragedy or snakes on a plane. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Nobody's had any new ideas since three thousand years ago, apparently. But there was this guy. He was a he was an auto racer. You can see the accident on the internet. It's really horrible. His his car got spun around and was stopped sideways on a on an oval racetrack. It was like the I think it was the Indy five hundred, and he just got t boned and lost both of his legs. And then he became a gold medalist in the Paralympics, um, some sort of cycling race in the Paralympics. And it's like, yes, this guy, he, he was just that type of person that, though he went through adversity, literally became the best in the world at something. And the book, the book goes over lots of examples like that. It also talks about how, speaking of the CEO mindset, if you want to have the CEO <laughs> mindset, the number one thing that can help you with that is be dyslexic apparently it's like the number one predictor because they have to learn they have to learn to learn in such a different way that for whatever reason uh it obviously it's not like 100 percent of ceos have it but a overwhelming 
uh, overwhelmingly large proportion of them do. And then it's funny, you, they, he did interviews with some of those people and he's like, you know, who you are, the, the kind of person you are, the way it shaped you, it, it made your like wildest dreams come true. And all of the people say, yeah, but I would, I would never hope for my children to have dyslexia like I do, you know? Mm. And it's this creepy thing. Like, imagine if the thousand smartest people who ever lived never lived. What we, what we would be like. We would probably, we'd probably still be scratching ideas into clay tablets, you know? Um, Potentially, but I also think of a... Uh... You know, like the great man myth. It's like, you know, if Einstein never came around, I mean, we were already on that path. That, that you know, stone had already started rolling. It, it was only a matter of time till someone stumbled upon it. True. There's some inevitability in there. And it reminds me of the standing on the shoulder of giants quotes. But I said, imagine if the thousand smartest people had never lived. So, I mean, so this, goes, this goes way back. If there had never been a Euclid, for example, what might we have never discovered? Or, like, it probably would have been inevitable, but maybe it happens a couple hundred years later. I mean... And, like, I don't know what I would do without an iron horse. <laughs> iron horse. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, uh, Euler. If Euler hadn't lived, then then most of, math- most of modern mathematics, maybe we wouldn't really be there yet. Um, it's just... It's interesting to think about. And, you know, it like if you could push a button and make, um, I don't know, like not like make people disappear, but make it so that nobody would ever be born with a learning disability ever again or something like that. I think a lot of us would be like, yeah, probably push the button. But in doing that, you may rid the world of future Einsteins. And it's like, yeah, damn, that's hard to, you, you, you that's hard to wrestle like, with. Uh, almost like like the autistic savants and stuff who like you know they struggle with other things but then like you know with a musical instrument they just pick it up really easy and they're just incredible at it or like the ones who are really really good with numbers and it's like yeah they might struggle in other parts but it's like they really really fucking advance in this one specific thing and uh i don't know yeah it's kind of weird to think like i i don't know it makes you wonder how many of the things that like humanity has come across came from people who weren't, uh, I don't know, I guess for lack of better terms, just on default settings. <laughs> on default settings, yeah. Yeah, you know, they, they tweak their sensitivity a little bit. This is something, when I started thinking about this, you know, I, I debate people, obviously, and a lot of people talk about, you know, how smart humans are and things like that. Um, it's like evolution couldn't have done that, or people think that, like maybe they think evolution is true, but they still think that we are touched by an angel or something because we're so gosh dang smart. And it's like, um, I don't really see, like, we are, but what when you do that, when you say that, what you're doing is you're you're taking the you're taking credit for the accomplishments of one ten thousandth of the population because it's only one ten thousandth or something of the population of humans that have ever lived that ever discover new things and rewrite history and uh, create these paradigm shifts. So again, imagine if the there have been so many people that have ever lived, like a hundred billion. Let's just get rid of the million smartest people that ever lived. Would we be where we are today? I don't think we'd be anywhere close to where we are today. I think we'd, but I don't know. I think we'd be living like people. We'd be in the Bronze Age, maybe the Iron Age. That's my guess. And so then it's like humans still are the smartest species, even if even if we are Bronze Age people or whatever. Um, but we, it's just we kind of funny. Significantly the, set back. <laughs> yeah, the the hubris people have for claiming how smart we are. It's it's just kind of funny. Man, this top sports guy. I'm pretty sure he's a troll. But this last four last four years for you atheists, like we're all gonna die after four years. I I don't understand why people hate on 
just atheists. It's like, dude, if you're going to hate somebody, go hate anti-theists. It's like atheists tend to just, you know, kind of, <laughs> they don't They're just very, agree with you. Yeah, they don't hate you. We're, we're very much mind your own business types of people. So I, I don't really get it either. Like if you want to debate, that's one thing, right? This is a platform for it, but it's like, I'm not going to approach someone in there at the fucking supermarket and be like, Hey, yo, man, you fucking idiot. <laughs> I saw this TikTok yesterday, this lady in a wheelchair at Costco. They had one of the big Halloween Grim Reaper things up. And she had a crucifix and she was pointing it at it. She's like, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. <laughs> and like the top comment was like, ma'am, this is a Costco. That's Sam's Club behavior. <laughs> like, you're you're going to have to get out of here with that, all right? We, we sell our chicken too cheap for you to be ruining our fucking customer experience. <laughs> Do you remember? Um, I was going to offer a counter point of view, but now I have to go and find that video. Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll get to you in a second. I'm sorry, but I, I remembered something else. Um, this was like, it was right before the pandemic started. Do you remember the, the lady at Walmart where she's like, I'm trying to help you, motherfucker? And the guy's like, I don't, I don't need your help, lady. Yes, you do, motherfucker. She kept calling him that. And then you she's, son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm trying to help you, you son of a bitch. Yeah. And then he, and then she calls him a sinner or whatever. And then he goes, well, you're sinning right now. And then she transforms into this like demon figure. She's like, how dare you? You fucking accu- you motherfucking accuser, and she specifically accuser. says accuser of the brethren. That's ex- that's specifically what she says to him. She, she's got that. She's got that. Uh, what is it? That Minnesota accent. Yeah, I want to see. This is why I wanted to stream on on Discord because then I, I could pull that up and we could all like watch and listen to it. But I can't do it here on TikTok. Ac- accuser of the brethren. <laughs> Uh, and then and then when the pandemic started people were sharing that video and they're like this is what this is what she was talking about can't you see she was trying to help you motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> all right steampunk what's up you could have ended this all um I, i'm offering a counter but it's not really an argument it's more of a discussion point because i don't have enough notes in front of me because i stumbled across yet but <clears throat> Um, you know, when we look at history and we look at the people who we record as geniuses, yeah, you know, and, and stuff, there's always a person. I, if you, if we look at like, say, Darwinism or, or, um, um, James Watt and the Newcomen engine, there was always somebody who invented that thing or came up with that theory around the same time, but they just happened to be the second place person, so we don't remember them for that. Yeah, um, there are some examples of that. Yeah. So um, um, I see the point of your argument that, you know, it's the majority, you know, we as a, as a race take credit for a minority, but then I also think of all the small things that have been invented that have helped our lives increase. Like, <clears throat> for instance, if we look at canning, just, you know, canning food, how um, much that helped us as a race, it's a minor invention in the grand scheme of things. Or if we look at, um, you know, the 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 horse powered stone mill leading to the steam powered stone mill leading to the you know the electrical grinder and how quick we produce flour and it's the small inventions i think that deserve credit not just our greatest advancements this i think the um I'm wholly unprepared for this discussion. But, no, I know um, what you're saying. I mean, like, yeah. you, you don't know to what degree yeah. something really small is going to have a huge impact. Like, like Louis Pasteur and the advances he made with, like, making food safe. I mean, we'll never know exactly, but that may be the reason somebody who um, discovers the next most important discovery in history was ever born because they might have just died otherwise of something simple. Yeah. And a, a lot of times I think it comes down to uh, the thing, I, I don't know, like even for example, let's say um, like LASIK eye surgery, right? Originally, uh, 
you know, it, I don't remember exactly what its use was, but it was some type of motion tracking thing that was in it. And they use that to track the motion of your eye in LASIK, um, like eye surgery now, just so they can, you know, those micro movements that you make, it can adjust for it on the spot. And it's like, that was never its original intention, but people, I don't know. I think we're just kind of built to look for, uh, I guess alternative uses for things that we're, we're really, we look at the intuitive uses. Yeah. The spin off. I'm trying to think of a way to word it. It's really hard. It's um, like the person who was trying to make a new super glue created the post it. Yeah. That's you a know, great example. A person who didn't like the tone of color that was on a certain bunch of nails threw him on a pile and realized that he'd invented galvanization. You know? So you want to hear the craziest example of this I've ever heard? This is a, this is a few years ago. I'll just read the headline. In Japan, a system designed to distinguish croissants from bear claws has turned out to be capable of a whole lot more. Oh, they kind of cut it off there, but they invented like this AI camera thing or whatever to like be able to distinguish pastries from each other. And um, they can now use it to look at cells under the microscope and it can tell which cells are cancerous and which ones aren't. Well, that's cool, but I definitely misheard you at first, right? You said to, like it can determine whether it's a pastry or a bear claw? Is that what I heard? A bear claw is a type of, it's a, what do they look like? I don't know. I've never it's, heard of this pastry. It's like a, uh, it's like a folded, it, it's, um, I was going to say it's like a pasty, but that's something that's in England. Um, but um, everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy. Why, should I know about this? <laughs> it's, um, if you can imagine a a pop tart with class. Oh, that's not what they look like here at all. It's just like it's a big <laughs> I mean, the flat. Part of it. It's a big flat folded pastry, and it's got like slits in it, so mm -hmm. it 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 very vaguely looks like a paw. So they call it a, a bear claw. Yeah. It's a fritter. Oh yeah, it's you know, like a fritter that's been yeah. sliced. A if you few go times. on to Panera, if you go on to Panera's website and just put bear claw, you'll see one because that's where I get mine from. Like a, like a fancy toaster strudel. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant by it's. It's a pop tart with class. <laughs> okay, I, I see. That's what I meant by this is my first time ever hearing of this. When you said bear claw, I immediately thought like. You know what our what our forefathers originally meant when they said we have the right to bear arms. You know we can take <laughs> bears' arms. So I thought you meant their claws. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just to clarify, I am in the states. Um, I'm just. You fooled me. Yeah. Well, hey, I've been here. For, <laughs> I've been here for twenty three years. Dude, um, more but, American uh, than I am. Well, actually, no. But by one year, I'm more American. What That's is crazy. that? Your age? Um, is that because of your age? Cause yeah, yeah, I'm 24. I, I, I'm old. <laughs> um, but um, the um, one of my one of my favorite examples of something that was invented by accident was the guy who was setting up the radar on the front and back of her ship. When he put his sandwich down and he invented the microwave. I thought oh. it was a chocolate bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've heard there's probably a yeah, bunch I've heard of different chocolate stories. bar too. Yeah. That it was like melted in his pocket. Yeah. Could be either, you know. That's um I mean, that's another thing level. that people don't yeah. understand is the role that luck plays in everything. Especially sports. I was I actually just did a big sports thing. Um, for my book, I just finished my book yesterday and the last story was about, um, sports myths. I did want to talk about, it, so I'll get into it in a little bit, but I, I went back and I was reading this other book for some references and the guy said, um, like, like it was something, it was like a formula, basically something like extremely good professional athletes. The formula is, um, a higher than average talent plus a lot of luck. And then he said for like the, the greatest athletes above average talent plus an extraordinarily amount of luck. Like he just thinks that luck plays an insane role in, in shaping all of that. And 
I mean, you can't you can't have a perfect game in baseball without luck. Yeah, you but can't. even like even like career wise, like people mm-hmm. people that talk about LeBron James and Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan played in an era where they had this really weird particular defensive scheme that they think they were just uniquely able to exploit. Um, and it had there was an expansion, so the talent got diluted and things like that. And LeBron James has just been extraordinarily unlucky in in many instances in his career. Kevin Durant going to the Warriors, Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving getting injured the first year they went there. Um, uh, th- there's really only a couple of examples for that. But anyways. what's your book called? My book is called, um, it won't be out for several months, but it's called Facts That Aren't True. Okay, I will check that out. My book is called An Incident of Impetus. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, it's, I, too, uh, sometimes cannot urinate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a steampunk alternative history. Nice. Well, I got to try to get some other guests, but thank you, steampunk. Not a problem. Thanks for having me up. And I do watch you quite a lot. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, um, I like the way that you tackle religion when people are just being so obtuse about it. Um, Which is most of the time. Yeah, and there's no need to be. Um, <laughs> there isn't. Um, and that's going to be my leaving point. If, um, I often say to people who, who, who try to force religion upon me that... Um, I like to drink beer, and the result of my drinking beer is I piss a lot. If your joy is religion, um, don't preach to me, because I will then have the right to piss on your head. <laughs> right. All right. Words of that, wisdom. That's one way to think about it. <laughs> and I don't know, for the luck thing, I don't know, with some sports, I guess you might be able to make an argument, but I, I immediately jump to like, I mean, even the UFC, like mm. fighting and stuff like that. I feel like, sure, there could be an aspect of luck, but I mean, a lot of it is setting traps, things like that, learning your opponent before you fight them. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, there's <clears throat> there are certain things where the the skill is overwhelmingly the biggest factor. But you know, you think luck about always like, does play a role. You can't you can't yeah. deny it. Yeah, but like, you know, like in basketball, luck is luck is such a big factor. I mean, Villanova won an NCAA championship on a buzzer beater. That that just never ha- and well, they did. And Butler, this tiny school that um uh when they played Duke one of those years, it was a uh, oh, what's the name of the guy that got his leg broken the first game of the season? Um he played oh. for the Celtics. Fuck. Yeah, I can't remember his uh, name. Shame on us. But he threw up a three-quarter shot, and it hit the rim and bounced out. It so very nearly went in. And, you know, that just completely changes so many things. Um, Tom it Brady? Kevin no, it's um, Gordon Hayward. That's who it was. Uh, um, I, I don't know anything about basketball. I just thought of people who yeah. broke their legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was Gordon Hayward. Just to put that out there. Um, Tom Brady, uh, Drew Bledsoe getting hurt and having Adam Vinatieri on your team and that tuck rule getting called, all of those things coming together formed, you know, the greatest dynasty in football history and, and was the beginning of the career for somebody that everybody regards as probably the best professional team sports player in American history. He probably would have been really great, um, without without those without some of those things but he wouldn't have won seven super bowls so yeah luck luck plays a huge role (laughs) and stalling (laughs) joseph stalin yeah he played a huge role in luck i mean he he basically you know he paved the way for the luckiest people not at all. He actually did the exact opposite of what oh, I just okay. said. <laughs> I was like, I was like what? <laughs> what? I thought you were going to say like there were some weird circumstances that resulted yeah, in you, him you coming to power or something. But was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stalin wasn't that bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know his mustache was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, and he was really hot when he was younger. 
and um, ridiculously paranoid. All right, I'm sorry. I'll let you talk to the new guy. I apologize. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I forgot what it was. Panini, what's up? Yeah, hello. I just wanted to... Uh... I don't even know how to start. I just really just wanted to come in and wanted to like thank you for making out content. That's what I that's what I wanted to do. Just it's it's like really really enjoyable what you what you do with your whole with all your debating and stuff because I'm not I'm not good at it, but I just just love that there's someone actually intellectual out there who's schooling the people that actually need to be more open about stuff and stop being so ignorant. Somebody's got to do it, and it might as well be me, I guess. You're welcome, and and thanks for the kind words. It's really inspirational, like, the kind of stuff that you do. It's really, it's it's just, it's really cool for me, me, I think, personally. You're you're a teacher, right? Isn't isn't that that something that you Well, kind of, sort of. I don't know what I am at the moment, but historically, yes, I have been. It's just you like your whole like content. It's just I just really wanted to say thank you for like for everything that, that you've done for like your debates, your talking to people, and I think I'm just gonna get out. I'm just gonna get out again, so you get actually someone that you can. Peterson, you should be our hero to us all. You know, it's. <laughs> you know what the weirdest thing about that is. Nobody that I, like, know in real life cares at all <laughs> that I do this well, stuff. They think, in fact, most of them think it's stupid <laughs> and I shouldn't do it. And it's like... Like, why do you even waste your time? And it's like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know. It's like, I don't know. So maybe they're just like su- it, maybe they're super jelly. I don't know. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, my best friends, like, like my my best friends... I couldn't pay them to watch what I do. And then random people, but random people all over the world thank me all the time. And it's just, it's such a weird, my it's friends such a weird dichotomy. Me. My friends will literally come in the comments and be like, you need to find better uses of your free time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody roasts you like your friends do. Yeah, I'm like, well, you know, at least thanks for the view, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Although hopefully it keeps my head from getting too big and then becoming a transforming into a different person. Yeah, don't worry. I'll I'll make sure to remind you how much of a beta you are every day. <laughs> you can count on that. Yeah. Yeah, the the traditional character arc for a for a content creator is is starts small, says controversial thing, gets big, gets uh gets branded and then gets caught doing something horrendous. <laughs> it's like and people have been lying about that to try to get me to fulfill the character arc, but well, don't worry, you're not a Minecraft work. YouTuber, so you're safe. <laughs> yeah. Kojima, what's up? How's it going, guys? Long time no see. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think there might be something screwy with your. Hold on, first of all, do you guys hear that truck? A little bit. Noise. Uh, the uh, I I was watching a video of yours uh, just before I came in. here. Well, I get my Wi-Fi off the back of the truck, so that probably doesn't help. Um, <laughs> I get I get the China Wi-Fi thing. Um, no, uh, uh, I wanted to talk about you guys because you guys are uh, talking about luck, and just say that, uh, like, just because you're lucky doesn't mean you don't put in a lot of work. And I, this is not against what you guys are saying because you weren't saying anything opposed to this, but you know, just like for the people in the comments, just like. If somebody says you're lucky, it doesn't mean you didn't also work very hard to get where you are or get what you have. It just means that you also have to consider that there are things outside of your control that led to, like, where you are. Um, yeah, that's Because it's like, you know, yeah. you know, those stories of people, like, they would get working in restaurants and they get discovered by, you know, Hollywood directors or whatever. Like, Harrison Ford worked in George Lucas's house, and that's how he got the role of Han Solo. Um like he he was a carpenter and he was he was building George Lucas's uh, cabinets and then it's like hey do you want to be in this fucking movie I'm doing and he's like oh okay um, <laughs> that's that's crazy I didn't know that he probably said it exactly like that too <laughs> yeah yeah whatever um, but yeah that's I mean so like 
you know, if you, you can work in any restaurant in Hollywood, but that doesn't mean you're going to work on the night of a Hollywood director and then also get picked up sort of deal. You're not going to, you could be a carpenter in some director's house and not get picked. Oh, they, you muted yourself. The trucker said you said enough about our Wi-Fi stealing. I got <laughs> raptured. Yeah. Now everything uh-huh. he's everything he was saying is true. It's <clears throat> well, except you know, <laughs> nowadays, and I, I don't know if this is a uniquely internet phenomenon or what, um, because it was happening with it was happening with TV before social media was as big as it. Well. No, you know what? I take that back. It it might be a uniquely internet phenomenon because there are a lot of talentless people that, you know, build empires and have just yeah. exorbitant amounts of of wealth and influence, whatever. Like everybody in the Kardashian family, right? Or like the Hawk Tua girl who just completely uprooted her life and moved to LA to start a podcast and do all this I, other stuff. It's like, it's like, girl, her. you're known for one video. Like, what do you think is gonna, you think this is gonna end well? I just, I will, uh, I will give her credit though for one thing. She actually did try to do some good stuff with, I guess, her 15 minutes of fame. It's, they were putting it, it was more like five because I shit you not. I have not seen a single article or video about her in like the past month. It's like after she had a wave for two weeks and then nobody cared. And that's yeah. just how the internet is. People need to notice that because that's happened to a lot of people. I mean, the people who got famous from like Vine and shit, they had a couple good videos and they got a bunch of followers and they uproot their whole life, moved to California, and now they can't afford anything because. <laughs> their app is gone and they couldn't they couldn't <laughs> move the followers to a different app <laughs> yeah that's yeah that that could happen to me one day i guess um yeah well the thing is though i'm not gonna uproot my life it's like yeah, i got a good amount of followers but the thing is i'm not a fucking idiot <laughs> yeah yeah at least she's not selling bath water and stuff like that so good on her that probably would have been more marketable <laughs> Like you could have turned it into fifteen minutes at least. <laughs> could have turned it into fifteen million, probably. Yeah, the thing is, you know, weirdly enough, we are in a point in time where that is very fucking possible. That's not even out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> no, it's it's really not. It's like I uh, guarantee you know, just be like, hey, check out my my special link. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the name of the site, but I guarantee you, right then and there, boom. Million dollars guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, Fuck, I would do it. I would sell toe picks for millions. I don't care. Toe picks. <laughs> yeah, dude. Feet pictures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Put some mustard on my toes. <laughs> just like walking on, like I don't know, like what? What do people that like feet stuff go for? Do they like beauty, or do they like, or do they want to see you like stepping on Legos? Like you want to see? I want to see them little piggies get punished. <laughs> You know, I don't know. like well, hold up, okay. hold it over a candle, walk on Legos, stuff like that. But my, my girlfriend, she's shown me, you know, like people who just try to interact with her on TikTok, and she goes to their page, and sometimes they'll have their likes, you know, still public. And she found this one guy who was real into feet. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I guy, wonder. I don't know. It was it was kind of a mixture. You know, there there was like feet stepping on stuff. There was just feet by themselves and it's like you know i don't understand this when i think of feet i think of like i don't know like rotten egg smell it's like you don't want that it's like even if they smell good you don't want that it's still a foot (laughs) yeah no i (laughs) so you can't you can't make a foot attract look all right if you're into feet that's cool for you all right i'm not judging but for me i can't i can't imagine a foot being attractive just in my eyes right beauty's in the eye of the beholder that's what they say right yeah i don't (laughs) I, it's so it's so hard to understand, but I don't know. Every I'm walking a very thin line here. I need to be careful with how I word this. Yeah. Well, like you know, I would. Wa- I like watching videos where people like smush slime, you know, with their with their hands or whatever. But like, but like the idea it's the same of thing with toes. But the idea of paying to watch somebody do it with their feet, or the idea of that. Um, <laughs> causing you to be happy we're gonna say it that way i'm just like uh okay <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know i mean i feel the same way about like 
ASMR though, right? It's like some people like it, but I went on Twitch one time with my buddy and we just wanted to troll the, the ASMR people. So we'd go in their chat and they have like these weird mics where it looks like two ears. And we were just in the comments like, what are those ear things? It's like, how much do you make from this? Should I start doing this? How much do those things cost? We got banned from everyone, but like they would start doing like this popping sound in the mic with their mouth. And I don't know, it sent like chills down my body. I had to leave. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I I don't know why anybody likes ASMR. It's just, I uh, I can't stand it. You know, the, I think you do know this guy. You know the guy on TikTok? He wears the Spider-Man costume. He does the real <laughs> ASMRs. And he'll have like a, he'll have like a, an oven rack. And he has just, this microphone. No pop filter. Cranks the gain all the way up and just... <laughs> The most, oh man, the worst one ever was he found like these really thick glass plates and he would like rub them together and it creates this insane piercing. You know, like when you like flick on a, a really tight, really long metal cable and it does that like yes. it's like that, but the loudest sound you've ever heard and really high pitched. And I was, I was watching it. I was like, I kind of like listening to this. Not for long periods of time, only for like 30 seconds, because it's really funny, but I love he that had guy's one where, <laughs> He had one where he had the cheese grater, yeah. and he was just going over top of the mic, slamming it on it, <laughs> scratching the mic, and I remember, <laughs> I just went in the comments, just loud, like, while he was screaming it already, he was screaming, Sui! <laughs> and I just typed it, and he said my name. And then screamed it again, and then just went back to fucking cheese grating the mic. <laughs> it's uh, like I felt I was accomplished. I could have died right then and there, and I would have been happy. <laughs> oh man, remember the remember the AI live streams or whatever those were called? Yeah, dude. Some people are still on those. <laughs> I don't see them. It. I don't see them anymore. This one chick's kept it kept popping up over and over again. She had really thick, really curly hair. And she would go like, whenever you would send like, I, I don't remember what it was. If you would send ice cream, she would like pretend to lick it three times in a row. If it was a rose, she would go, thank you for the rose. And she would say it for every single one of them. So she would say it like 20 times in a row. And then she had this weird thing where she would sneeze if she, if she said thank you for the rose like five times in a row or something. I was like, how can you even like, I guess it would be easy to remember doing that, but. I was, I was just so weird. You know who I saw? <laughs> you know, you know, Shark Wahlberg, or no, not Wahlberg. He, wait, does he go by Wahlberg? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, sh I, Shark, I the guy. He usually has, he usually has a shaved head, and he's like super. Yeah, he goes oh. by Shark Wahlberg. Yeah. Yeah, I do know this guy. He was doing one one time. I only watched it for like ten seconds, but he like nobody was like. Nobody was taking the bait, so he was just sitting there. <laughs> and then nobody was sending anything, so it's like, ah, that's too bad. But, yeah, I always wonder, like, how do those lives end? Do they just break character? They're like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, or like, that is interesting. I don't even know. There's that one guy. Um, what is it? He. How is Irish in here? He must have created a thirtieth account. What do you mean? He already had thirty. That's that's number twenty two. He's on currently. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I blocked him. Anyways, enjoy your phone call from the FBI soon. Ooh, that sounds like a fun way to spend a weekend. Yeah. Oh no! 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 Somebody get <laughs> somebody guest requested, and I went to tap it, and as I went to tap it. They disappeared, and that top sports guy was the top one, so I clicked invite to them. I hate I hate the way websites do that. You go to click on an X, and it moves it, so you click on the link, you know? Yeah, or the ones where it has an X, and you try to click it, but there's an overlay over top of the whole screen, yeah. so it doesn't matter where you click, you're getting taken to an ad. Yeah. <laughs> they, Those have, ones they have real networks. They prey on your reaction time. Yeah, that's it's it's so automatic that it just happens before you can adjust to it. It's so it's so 
it's genius, but it's evil. Yeah, I don't know. I like the websites that are just in your face about it. They're like, look, we're going to make you watch an ad. All right, you don't have a fucking choice. <laughs> like YouTube, if you don't have an ad blocker, if you're you know still a pleb that's just on normal Chrome with no plugins, extensions, or whatever, at least they have the audacity to just force it on you. They're not like, oh yeah, click this and you can get rid of it. <laughs> Not to make not to make too much of a point about it, but I I clicked on that Irish thing, and the username was Irish twenty two. So that's that's how many we're up to. Zero followers. Yeah, he uh, he, must he have, has a bunch of them. When yeah, when I, I, I posted your video, I tried to at him in it, and then like I shit you not, there was like the same username, but then like twelve, eighteen. <laughs> I think the highest I saw was. What was it like 32 but i don't know if he just makes random numbers after him or not i would guess not but either way to say. that's how why what's the point <laughs> yeah because he keeps getting in trouble and he needs to be able to creep on people and he's a degenerate piece of shit and a cyber and a serial stalker oh that's putting it nicely i i feel like that could have been worded more harshly we gotta keep it TikTok friendly, okay? All right, he's a he's a doo doo poo poo. This is really weird. When when I type stuff in the chat on my desktop, it doesn't show up on the on the chat here on my phone. But I think people me? but people saw it because people are saying, um, like Roger, copy that. It's yeah. I don't get it. It's yeah, weird. I see it. I, I noticed that before too. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I think it's just because are you, are you well? Yeah, you have to be logged into the same account because that's the account you commented from. I think yeah. that's what makes it the issue. Maybe sometimes because you can't do this on a phone. I mean, you can, but it's not as effective. When I'll see somebody like Darth Dawkins is live, if I'm already at the computer, I'll pull it up and I'll just type Darth dipshit, and then I'll I'll click co I'll copy it. And then I'll just go to the chat and I'll I'll hit paste enter paste enter paste enter. I'll do it as fast as I can, so it's just a never ending stream of Darth Dip shit. <laughs> I I honestly I don't know. I wonder how many people. I mean, I don't really go live super often anymore, but used to come into my live and just spam because it was at a point like when I first started, probably like a year after. When I would host lives, I would get people like, I don't even know if you're going to know this name, but like Grant Charles. Does that sound familiar at all? Nope. Uh, well, he was a very, very annoying flat earther where, uh, I mean, shit, even in Maria's live, for some reason, she made him a mod. But he would come in and just spam like over and over and over and over the exact same thing. And then s <laughs> he would get into like muting battles with the other mods. It's like, just just get rid of this fucking guy. It's like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, you wouldn't let a toddler drive. You wouldn't download a car. You know what I mean? You wouldn't, you wouldn't download a car. You wouldn't <laughs> download a sub sandwich. It's like, yeah, I, yeah, I would. <laughs> Dude, if that was an option, I definitely would. <laughs> those those anti-piracy things that were at the beginning of DVDs. That, <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. It's like, you wouldn't. They would show you like robbing an elderly woman. It's like, what the fuck? How can you relate these two yeah, at I all? Mean, I wouldn't do that, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like you're right. I wouldn't rob an old lady, but I feel like downloading a song is you know not on the same level. Yeah, the way they tried to. It is. It is very weird how how fast like the the music industry changed. You know, like when it was first like Napster and, and LimeWire and whatever. And there were all these like, you know, it's, have you ever been to the LimeWire website recently? No, I didn't even use it's LimeWire. It's so funny. It was popular. Oh, LimeWire was so awful. It, it gave your computer AIDS every single time. That's, that's why but, I didn't um, use it. I was scared of it. <laughs> oh, do they have a, can, wait, what? Wait, what? Last time I haven't, I been to the LimeWire website in a long time, but the last time I went on, all it said was, it was just a white screen with their logo, and it said, 
downloading music illegally is wrong. Don't do it. <laughs> like they they lost their lawsuit so bad that they so had to now. that they had to. Yeah, I went on there and I saw that you can pay for it. Even Wait, is this the same thing? This is like in it's the same like, logo. Yeah, but it's like an AI image creator. What the fuck? Uh, maybe maybe the name got bought. Oh, you know what? That would make sense. The domain got bought out or something. Yeah, it very well could have been. Because it's, it's really popular. Like like on South Park when they named their company the Washington Redskins. Because <laughs> there was no trademark on what it. Was it. There was um, some dude who bought the domain to Google. Like he just happened to check it and they hadn't renewed it. So he just bought it and Google paid him to get it back. It wasn't much, but like, dude, that's kind of crazy that that kind of shit can even happen. And it makes you wonder, is LimeWire ever going to be big again? Are they going to start AI generating like T-Pain songs or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But going back, it is pretty weird how fast the music industry changed. And now, you know, it, if you if your song gets listened to a billion times on Spotify, you make... I doubt you even make a hundred thousand dollars, you know, which is so which is so crazy to think about. And we all just collectively told the music industry, yeah, nobody nobody buys albums, just go on tour. And we were all just like, deal with it, <laughs> you know. But at the same time, that's the market. That's that's what ha- it did. It does seem really unfair, but at the same time, as Dewey said on Malcolm in the Middle, the future is now, old man. So. <laughs> It's a, I don't know. I just, I think it's weird. I, I've noticed that um, the older I get, I'm starting to become more like the people I consider old. You know, yeah. I, I start hearing the new music and I'm like, what the hell is this? Or like, they're like, oh man, this oh celebrity. Oh my God, it's it. all like, toilet sounds. <laughs> like, I, I kid you not, the, what, what is it? There's this page called No Jumper and I, I followed them back in 2016 and I don't know why, but I still follow them on one of my Instagram accounts that I had. And I looked at it and I looked through like a bunch of their posts and every single post is about people that I don't even know, but apparently they're popular. It's like, I, I feel so just out of the loop now. I don't know. It's strange. I'm not even that old yet, but I don't understand half the shit people are saying. <laughs> it is. I don't, I, I actually do genuinely think that music is degenerating because what people have done, what what the music industry has done mostly is <clears throat> there's there have always been tricks they've played. Um, publishers with books do this too, and um, record labels do this. They just buy a fuck ton of their own book or album, and then that makes it chart high, and then it runs away from there. That's I mean that's just so. Um. They, they that's like such artificially a sleazy, buy the virality. <laughs> yeah, that's such a sleazy tactic, but I mean, I guess whatever. But um like music now is is engineered to be catchy because like everything else, it's just become addicting. That's all they care about. Um so that's why every single horrendous pop song has a chorus that's really catchy and there's a hook to it. And then everything in between is just whatever random nonsense. It doesn't even matter. And then there's, and the, the, I can't remember his name. There's this guy, he's Scandinavian. Let me see if I can look it up. Is it the crazy guy who like got the blacked out eye tattoos and stuff? No, his, his name's Max Martin. And oh yeah, I'm definitely thinking of a different guy. <laughs> he's written, he's written all of these it insanely mega pop hits. Um, he let me see if I can find the list of songs he's written. Um, Max Martin's song list. Um. Uh, oh man, a lot of these I haven't heard of. He wrote "I Want It That Way." Wait, that says twenty. Oh. That says twenty twenty. Uh, I, I okay. think I know who you're talking about, though. Yeah, he's he's written like a bunch of uh, this isn't showing the name of the artist along with these. But he's written Backstreet Boys songs, he's written Taylor Swift songs, he's written Britney Spears songs. Um yeah, he wrote he wrote Lucky by Britney Spears. He wrote Crimp I don't know that song. Um 
Actually, none of these ring a bell except for that one. But he's written five of Britney Spears' songs. Um, he wrote As Long As You Love Me, Everybody, and Bigger by the Backstreet Boys, The One. Um, those are those are their most popular songs. Some random guy, Max Martin, that's his name. Um, yeah, he's from Sweden. Yeah, wrote songs for NSYNC, Bon Jovi. That's crazy. Um... 22 by Taylor Swift. He wrote that. She didn't write that. He wrote Bad Blood. She didn't write that song. Um, <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> and so, I, it's, I don't know if he always writes the lyrics or if he usually writes the music, like just the score, or if he does both. But it's like, yeah, th- it's this guy. He's very, very clever. Like, good for him. I like those songs, too. But, like, the originality and the artistry of music has just been, how do I don't want to say it? It's not like it's been removed, because there's, there's, the thing about music is there's too much good music. There just is. Um, but, like, the mega stuff, you know, that's just, that's engineered more than it is created, like, originally or whatever. And it's just, it's sad. It's just really I mean, sad. There- and it's like, yeah, there is good stuff, but I mean, even when, um, like you said, like you can just kind of have, you know, a, a catchy hook for people to kind of grab onto. And then after that, just fill it with whatever there, there was a, uh, a song. I, I don't remember how old I was when it came out, but by this guy named Hobson and he just called it no words, just making fun of it. <laughs> and he's like, all you have to do is have a hard beat and then say whatever the fuck you want. And as long as it rhymes, you'll say it's good. And then he shows the, the whole song is an example of that. And it's like, dude, it sounds the exact same. It's just fucking nonsense. But with the beat behind it, it's like you would call it good if it's, you know, mastered, right? <laughs> Maybe not good, but you would call it passable. Oh, my gosh. This guy, Max Martin, he's written the second most number one singles of all time next to Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney has has 32. He also wrote I Kissed a Girl, Roar by Katy Perry, One More Night by Maroon 5. He wrote Shake It Off and Blank Space. I think when I was going over the T-Swift songs, I I don't think I mentioned those ones, but... (laughs) What? Okay. There's this thing called the ASCAP Pop Music Awards. He won it in 1999, 2000, 2001, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. My God, this dude's got LeBron stats. What the hell? <laughs> he really does. Like, what, what the, the hell? Fuck? <laughs> <sighs> it's like, yeah, the years he didn't get it is because he was taking a break. <laughs> yeah, prob- probably. Probably. He- he took, he took the twenty million he made at first, went on vacation for ten years, and then he now he's going to take the two hundred million he made the second time. <laughs> uh, that's just not, that's not nice. Stop that, stop that music industry. Oh, you know earlier you were talking about some guy bought, <laughs> bought the the name Google or whatever because the yeah. trademark expired or whatever. Did you hear the rumor that you know how Sierra Mist is now Starry? Yeah. Did you hear it's because there's a streamer who goes by Sierra Mist and she bought the copyright when it lapsed because they weren't they didn't renew it because they weren't paying attention? If that's true, that's fucking funny. I wish it was true, but it's not. I heard that I heard that rumor multiple multiple times, and there is a streamer who goes by Sierra Mist, but she didn't buy the the trademark or anything like that. Ooh. It's like the Hawk Tua girl. Everybody said, do you know she's a teacher and she got fired because of that? She wasn't. <laughs> or she wasn't a teacher and she didn't get fired or anything. And Let's it's kind of weird, to too. Like, I guess kind of a weird shift. But, like, I think of, um, fuck, what is that? Oh, I can never remember it. That one YouTube channel that puts out a bunch of false bullshit uh, for the history Gosh, they they did one about how it's what the Civil War wasn't about slavery. Like they did one about oh, that. Oh, Prager, you? Yeah, I 
or did they? I, I don't know. They, they did a bunch of weird shit. But point being, anybody who's not at least a little bit educated on those topics, if you were to just stumble across that video trying to learn about it, it is put together well enough to where you'd probably buy it. Yeah, it's great <laughs> like, production you didn't know value. Yeah, like the... I feel like we talked about the. I know I talked about this with somebody recently. I don't remember if it was you or not, but like the Ark, the the Creation Museum, the fucking dinosaurs they have there are like the the they're not statues. I don't know, like the figures, the life size figures or whatever, are actually like super incredible. It's really impressive, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's bullshit. But we just um <laughs> production value greater than truth that's that's very well put simple that's, that's basically how it seems with their channel <laughs> yeah um but yeah i don't know it's just we're all so fucking gullible like the hog to it i just believed it animatronics i don't think they're not very many of them are animatronics because they don't move but i don't know what you call that the there's a really cool muse dinosaur museum in south dakota in it's like outside of Rapid City as you're heading toward the Black Hills. It doesn't look like much. It's literally just a shed. And I think it's right outside of Reptile Gardens. But they have like they have a crapload of life sized dinosaur replicas. And it's actually it's actually pretty cool. So Oh um Fuck, what was it? Someone commented about it. Oh, yeah, they said Creation Museum. Um, yeah, the art. Yeah, there, there's like a... You can just call it the Young Earth Creationist Heaven on Earth. <laughs> That's where they go to ignore all science. No, but... um, Basically. Say, have you ever seen Bill Nye when he went there? Yeah, he... It yeah. was, it was so funny. funny. They're, like, they're like, isn't this... Isn't this a wonderful museum? Aren't these the most beautiful things you've ever seen? And he's like, I think that $100 million could have gone to better use. <laughs> yeah, he, he really roasted them. It's really, when you watch that, it is pretty fascinating. Bill is actually really bad at just talking to people off the cuff. And Ken is, the Ken Ham guy, he's really good at it. Because Bill Nye's not a brainwasher. Like, if you watch... There are like these young children there and Ken gives her, gives her the whole spiel about like why God had to flood the world and like so on and so on. And he's, it's, it's cause he said it a million times. And it's when Bill, strict. when Bill talks, he just goes, well, um, little girl, like that's how he starts <laughs> off. And it's like, Bill, you fuck, you, you lost <laughs> immediately. It doesn't matter if what you say is true. You lost. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I can't. <laughs> At least with like a lot of science communicators, at least now, I I wouldn't want to put a lot of them in that position. Like, because I think, you know, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, he would have a lot to say about it. But I feel like he'd go off on a tangent and confuse them. And it's like, well, it's not because he's bad at what he does. It's because he's really, really good at trying to connect different. He's like Vsauce, I think is a good way yeah. to put it. He's like Vsauce, but, you know, not as good with connecting with the audience <laughs> Vsauce was my inspiration and I, I try to I try to think the, in the way he does his videos where it's like but what if everybody on the planet was a penguin <laughs> and then the music starts you know I try to I, I don't try to go that extreme but especially when I wrote my second book there are so many tangents in that book it's it's crazy but that's I think that's fun. It's it's a journey that you go on. Right. And it's like it's good, but it's like in that format, it doesn't work. Like, I don't know, you you like you'd probably do really good. If you were to face somebody like head on, you know, I guess in like a real life situation, I think you'd do fine because you already do it all the time on camera. What's the difference? Yeah. It's like I've seen Aaron Ra go up to street preachers and start debating with them and he does it the literally it's like you could put it on his youtube channel and it'd be a video it's yeah, the same thing he's pretty good at it he's practiced it a lot rue yeah. what is up nothing much how are you today good enough <laughs> i guess that's fair i had a question about uh potential future lives you could be doing lot li lives um 
I know you've mentioned in some of your videos that you're a teacher, so I don't know if this restricts you from doing this, but have you ever thought about doing political lives? Oh, um, I, honestly, I would like to, but I don't know if that kind of content would work very well for me because the last... <laughs> So, like, I'm looking at my YouTube videos here, and what's the like ratio? 98.5, 99.4, 99, 98.3, 96.1, 96.2, 99.6. The last time I up <laughs> uploaded a political video, um, 65.6. So, you know, still mostly likes, but, like, I lost subscribers from it, you know? And wow. I mean, it's... <laughs> It wasn't because people were saying it's not totally fair because it's not like people were were saying that because I chose to talk about politics. It's because I said I don't support Kamala Harris and everything I talk about and do is very left coded. I'm a left leaning person, but because I I violated the decorum, apparently I just got uh, people hated it so much, and so. I just, I wish I would like to, if I ever, if I ever start to get like pretty big one day, I would just create a second channel and it would just be called like, um, Peterson planet politic or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, because I don't know. I have, I have a lot of, I have a lot of thoughts. I mean, I talk about political things every now and then, but I, I mostly talk about like issues, not people. And I think that kind of helps a lot. Like, I don't know. So. I, and I think that's fair. I think just looking at the issues rather than the people is kind of a good way to go about it because you're not playing to a certain demographic, yet you're still showing that there are problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. However, at the same time, uh, as shitty as it is to say, controversy drives views. I mean, if you go on a live and you're just very you know, vague about your positions. A lot of people don't really care for it. But when you like Peterson, when he does his lives, he, uh, it's like very absolute points. It's like the big bang happened slash is happening or whatever. I don't, I don't have your points memorized. Earth is not flat. It's like, then you, you'll get opposition that stands like really firmly in one spot. Cause I don't know, maybe this is just me personally, but I hate when people join and they're just on the fence and they're like, they try to play both sides. And it's like, no, dude. It's, they're not interesting to talk to, yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, look, I understand. It's like, you're very reasonable, and I appreciate that. But for viewership, this is awful. Like, nobody wants to hear two reasonable people just talk. <laughs> you need a little bit of rage, hey. Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's why Parker does well. He really does a good job at drawing in people that are just fucking crazy. Yeah, and I think that's a really cool thing uh, that I've noticed from you guys, especially, and those big debaters, is they sort of have a switch, and they know how to turn it off. When they need to get heated, they get heated for views, and when you need to show love to their supporters, they can almost turn that flip switch off automatically. I, I wish I had that. When I'm pissed off, I'm just like, man, I'm not even reading the chat. I'm like, dude, this guy is an idiot, and I just <laughs> I need to speak. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you guys. Have and a good day. All right, thanks, Rue. It's just coincidence that you happen to debate people who are right leaning. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just a coincidence. It's so pathetic how you can predict somebody's political ideation with a question like, "Do you think humans impact the climate, or do you think mm. people evolve?" I, uh, although, funny enough, like. Studies have shown that, you know, people people on the left or you take a position like climate change, your position on climate change does not predict at all how scientifically literate you actually are. So, yeah, no, it, a lot of people really do just kind of jump on bandwagon. I think everyone's guilty of it to some degree. Mm, for you sure. know, some more than others, for sure. I mean, even like you brought up the hawk to a girl like you said you just kind of believed it right away when you're like oh she was a teacher but then you write into it and you're like oh well i guess mm. i was wrong but that's the difference you were willing to learn <laughs> that's yeah. yeah that's that's true yeah i think i i think we've talked about it before peter i mean it's been a, a while 
but uh, it was how the idea of like knowledge equals power doesn't really equate anymore. Or I, I, or I don't know if I was thinking about it then, but the idea, I think the idea now is that like the perception of knowledge equal is equal to like the perception of power, which is like feels like the same thing, but obviously isn't right. Cause if you feel like you're smart or if you can feel like you can make other people dumber than you, then you feel powerful even if you're don't if you don't actually have any like power in that area, <laughs> David Weiss. <laughs> David Weiss. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> something got in my throat. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what it was. <laughs> but yeah, it's just the idea of like, it's you have to be okay with being wrong about something, and whether or not you like learn to fucking like want. See, there, there's um, so like the idea of um, like multitasking scientifically is incorrect. You can't like do two physically different things at the same time, right? Like your brain can do focus on one thing at a time. Now you can jump between things very quick, but like scientifically, you can only focus on one thing at a time. But like, if you can, I don't know, like I can uh, talk and like walk around or I can talk and do other stuff. Right. And that feels like multitasking to me. Do you want to uh, prove that in a hilarious fashion right now? Uh, I feel like it's going to be embarrassing, but fuck yeah, let's do it. It, it, it will be. I, either one of you can do it. I, I don't care, but you just have to have something to write with. That's it. And, and a piece of paper or something. Okay. I, uh, I actually don't have those. I, I can't afford those things. I do this in school and it's because when I, I do this in school and my students ask me if they can listen to music while reading or studying and I'm like, no, and here's why. And I, I'll prove to you that this is a bad idea. Should I face the camera to the thing that I'm writing on? Yes, because it's okay. going to be so very funny. Let's do let's do some fucking science, man. <laughs> All right. Do you want me to sing? We, I can sing some copyright free music. <laughs> nope. Kojima's going to do it. So what I need well, you to I'm do. Also gonna sing? What I need you to do is write down the lyrics to the itsy bitsy spider while singing "Row, row, row your boat." Oh Jesus Christ! I can I can feel it. Okay. Um, what are the lyrics of the Itsy Bitsy Spider? <laughs> the itsy bitsy. So, the Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout, down came the rain, and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried it. You're only going to get, like, the first couple of words, don't worry. But the Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout. I can I can feel my brain shorting out as you're just describing what yeah. to do. All right. And then um, row, row, row your boat is just row, 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 row your boat gently down the stream. So just try to do that. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life Fuck. is but a dream. <laughs> uh, that's an I. Uh, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 right? Life is but a dream. Ah, it's so. <laughs> I'm definitely cheating by like switching my brain between these two uh, <laughs> these two tasks. Um, you're doing yeah, so that's that's all we need to do you do thank you. you did 10 times better than anybody i've ever seen do it usually Hell usually yeah. we don't get past the itsy and the students <laughs> are like i can't because they can't write down something that they're not saying it's just yeah. it's so incredibly hard to do and so i told them like look if, you, if you're listening to a song that you know that has lyrics your brain is just going to Think about the lyrics and not what you're reading, and it's just not a good idea. So, sorry, but I highly, highly discourage it. Mm. I, don't know, I like having like a background noise, but I can't turn on a show or something that I'm interested in, and I'm gonna like, you know, try to peek over at or anything. I I will lose focus. But I don't know. I'm the same way when I sleep. I, I have a TV on. I don't listen to what's happening. I just like having the noise. Mm. I'm right there with you because, like, like I can have something on and read, but I can't watch. I can't listen to something and read because those are, you know. Yeah, like if if I start paying too much attention to what they're saying, I'll, I'll completely lose track of where I am. And I'm like, I, what, what was I doing? <laughs> hmm. But I think it's it's something for me where I like that that pulling my focus does help me a little bit to focus because if I try to do a task, I'm gonna get distracted by something. So if I like control the thing I'm getting distracted by, at least I can like pull myself back into the thing that I'm focusing on. Um, right now I'm I'm compiling all of the um, I don't know if you either of you have seen um actually 
it's a, a college humor dropout show. They do uh, uh, they they read an incorrect statement, and the contestants have to like correct the statement. But it's a bunch of all like nerdy like fandom shit. Um, and so I'm compiling all of that for because I'm doing a panel for uh, Comic Con Honolulu is coming up, and like I always I try to have on like something else in the background that can like pull my focus just enough so that I can focus back on what I'm doing. Usually it's Star Trek. I've watched Star Trek so many times now. Star Trek. Kind of uh, kind of unrelated, but <laughs> you guys ever like go through like clean your room, and then you yeah. just find some random thing that like. You're like, no, clean my room. <laughs> you can stop right there. End of stage. You find like a random item or just something, I don't know, a piece of paper that you wrote on years ago. You have to stop and look at it. Like, I can't help myself. Like, even if it's something that I know I'm going to throw away, like fucking math homework from seventh grade, I look at it and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I have that's, to inspect every bit of it. That's fucking huge. That specifically doesn't happen to me, but I think this yeah. is a very guy thing. Like, I don't have a, a messy house, but I will leave things in places where they, like, there's there's a couple of cardboard boxes here from an Amazon package just sitting in the middle of the room. That will be there for two weeks. It won't get moved. I'll adjust my life to walk around it. And the goddamn recycling bin is not even 50 feet away, but it's just not going to move, right? So I, <laughs> there can be instances where, like, my wife will be like, do you know where there may, or, like, I'll say to her, like, could you grab a guitar pick for me? And she'll be like, where are they? I'm like, there's one inside that bowl that's underneath the hutch in the living room. And she'll be like, how do you know that? <laughs> it's like because I put it there like two years ago and I haven't moved it yet. There, there was a Tumblr where post. it is. There was a Tumblr post like that. I think it was Tumblr. It was it was some one of those sites where it was like uh, somebody got a text. It's like, hey, uh, do you have any paper t- paper clips? She was, uh, it was a woman like messaging her husband or something like that, and she, it was like, hey, do you have any paper clips? And he's like, oh, there's one under the desk at uh, next to the right side leg or whatever. And I think there it's like yeah, it's a just, picture of just the, sitting like, there, yeah. sitting on the ground by itself, uh, right next to like the table leg, like, and it's like, why just put it where the paper clips go? <laughs> like, no, that is my that is my that is my storage mechanism. Yeah, I just look it's, okay next to the th- okay, all right. Yeah, I'm. A, and it's always I'm a, like the weirdest places to like. I don't know. Sometimes when there's another key in the car, I'll I'll just like put it in a certain spot in the garage. And we never leave our keys there. I'm the only one that does that. It's, like, it's from memorizing where things are on Skyrim maps and Minecraft and stuff like that. It, it maybe honestly that, might maybe be. That's what, it, it, it could be. <laughs> like I just There's, remember the route in my head. I'm like, you know, this all looks familiar, but it's my house. So I'm like, dude, I'm definitely going to remember where I put this. And then I lose it while it's on my desk. <laughs> it's the worst when, I, in fact, I was just playing Minecraft. And it's the worst when, like... I fully had a bed, fully slept in it, and knew it was okay. And then I died, and it sent me back to, like, the original spawn point. You know, like it does when, oh, your bed's been oh, destroyed. Oh, yeah, it sent you back to zero, and zero. Like, Bullshit, it has, my bed's been destroyed. Why did you do this? But I'm like, now I have to figure out where the fuck I was. And I've been playing this particular world for so long. I didn't wear, remember where in relation to the start of the map it was. So I'm like, okay, let's pull up the fucking coordinate thing and try to figure out. I think this is the coordinate that I last saw. So let's run to this space and just run up and down the map as much as I can to let figure out where the fuck I lost all my shit. You gotta, you gotta scan it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm like, okay, I think there were trees. There was definitely snow. Um, there was water, and like trying to remember what the water fucking pattern looked like. And it's like we we remember the most useless stuff, but then when you need to remember something important, your brain is like, nah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I had a doctor's <laughs> appointment. Oh, weird. Peterson, what's your uh, anniversary? <laughs> shit. No, I, it's actually it's actually really easy. It's eleven eleven. Oh, that's I, awesome. I told my girlfriend like well into or like right when we started dating, I was like, by the way, I'm really, really bad with dates. So like don't expect me to remember like you're gonna have to remind me like a couple weeks before so I can start planning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna tell you her birthday, but her birthday's the same way. It's it's the same day of the of the month. That it's in. It's, it's well, pretty actually, nice. There's 12 options. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that narrows it down quite a bit. Um, my, actually, my girlfriend's the same way. She's got her 
mean, her birthday and uh, and day and month are the same number. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't. The eleven eleven. It wasn't really intentional. I mean, we kind of landed on it. It had to be a couple different dates. We wanted to either do Columbus Day weekend because it's a three day weekend, or Veterans Day weekend because it's a mm. three day weekend, and Veterans Day was farther out, so that worked better. And Saturday was the eleventh, so there yeah. you go. Um, yeah. Speaking of speaking of beds, you guys are talking about Minecraft or whatever. But so my parents split up when I was pretty young, but they always lived like at most like you know twenty miles from each other. So I'd just like go to dad's for a couple of days, go to mom's for a couple of days, go to dad's for a day, stay at mom's for three days, like just back and forth. It was very like there was never any issue with it or anything, and it was. We, we kind of had yeah, like I don't know. My dad mostly kind of had the most say in it, but it wasn't like a big deal at all. That was just kind of like his job to like schedule it or whatever. But anyways, I'm just I would, imagining young Peterson with a like a school backpack and carrying his blanket at like eight years old. Be like, I think I'm gonna stay at dad's tonight, and just walking <laughs> ten full miles to his dad's house. I didn't like, have a blanket. <laughs> yeah, walking ten miles. <laughs> I do have a picture of me. A fucking, like, eight-year-old be like i don't i want to hang out with her mom's tonight she's having fucking chicken katsu i'm gonna have some fucking chicken katsu at mom's house no yeah she definitely never cooked that damn i want that now i think maybe i'll go to the sushi place tonight um i do have the picture of me on my first day of school i'm wearing a green striped shirt and i have a red backpack on that's what i remember at least but we always form false memories anyway i haven't told my story yet stop it (laughs) um (laughs) (laughs) but anyways um, occasionally I would, I would wake up and, you know, you wake up, but you don't open your eyes. Um, and I would, I would think I'm at mom's place, but then I would open my eyes and I'm in my room at my dad's. And for a brief second, I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, I'm at dad's. Yeah. That's what it's, that's a weird, it's a weird sensation. It's very niche, but it's yeah. very weird. Yeah. I, I experienced that the first time I ever got intoxicated. <laughs> 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 you, you, oh God, I can sorry, you didn't expect. much earlier than I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, I, did you ever have those dreams where you would like, you were, you didn't, I mean, obviously you didn't know you were dreaming, but you like get a thing. You're holding a thing. You've got it in your hand. And as you wake up, you still feel that thing in your hand. And you're like, if I, I know now that i was dreaming but if i look at my hand the thing that i am holding i know i'm holding disappear and it's like well i gotta fucking look to see that i have it and you look and it's obviously not there but i'm like you know i haven't had that specific one i can smell and taste things in my dreams it's super i have very very vivid dreams it's really weird a couple weeks ago you guys have probably experienced waking up but you're actually still dreaming and then you wake up for real. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I might forget exactly what it was, but I, I dreamt that I woke up and I, I went and told my wife what my dream was, but I was mm. still dreaming. And then I woke up. That one was really weird because I didn't mm. just dream, <laughs> dream, dreamt, whatever. I didn't just dream that I woke up. I dreamed that I woke up and went and started talking about all oh, this crazy dream that I had, but that was a crazy dream that I had. I had yeah. one that was like, like two, like two or three layers worth. Like I woke up, was still dreaming. And then was like, Oh, I'm, I was dreaming. And then I woke up again. And then I woke up like what in now what I believe is the real world. But how, I might I might wake up here in a few minutes anyway, so who who's to say? Yeah, who knows? This this could be a dream. I get when I um if I wake up in the morning and like I don't have to get up, so it's like between the hours of like seven, eight, nine in the morning, if I'm awake but I just keep laying down to like I'll only fall asleep for really brief periods, those are the weirdest ass dreams and they only last for about thirty seconds. But I can't tell what reality even is or isn't when that's happening. Because I'll fall asleep five times and have five completely different dreams. It's it's very strange. Oh. I uh totally unrelated. <laughs> Life is but a dream, the itsy bitsy spider. It's 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 all come for a full circle now. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, to- totally. Well, I don't know. Maybe not so funny. Maybe totally. But uh, I had a dream one time that I was eating, and I think it's because I fell asleep like while I was eating. I was super tired, but I woke up and I still had food in my mouth. <laughs> it was it was kind of gross, so I just spit it out mm. and I went and like brushed my teeth. But I, that. I don't know. That was on my mind for a while. I was like, is that like a, a unique experience or has that ever happened to you guys? You guys ever fell asleep with food in your mouth and then woke I've, up to discover it? Well, I have never clarify, done that. No, that's like, that's extremely dangerous too. <laughs> just to clarify, you were eating food and then fell asleep and then woke up with food still in your mouth? Or Yeah, you like I think I fell night. asleep mid-chew. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> That's so dangerous. Don't I, do I that. I don't even know how. I, I was stone cold sober that night. Okay. Fucking, I, I was just tired. I, I shit thought you, not. you had like, went to bed, and then you woke up, and there was food in your mouth. And, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm oh, like... That's- you need to see somebody because you're going to get. I remember food. it was a fucking it was a spicy McChicken because we just got them at the McDonald's near us, and I used to eat them all the time when I was still in Colorado. But mm. I came to Nebraska, and you know. Fucking the spiciest thing we had here was blueberry yogurt. <laughs> oh, no. That's too spicy for me, dog. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. you gotta take the you gotta take the blueberries out of there, man. <laughs> the, uh, spi- the spiciest thing was blueberry. Yeah, dude, well, you know, mayonnaise has a little bit too much kick to it for Nebraskans, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> that egg, it's that egg, it's got all that funky yolk. Yeah, I don't understand it. No, but that was like, oh, I missed it. I would go out to Colorado. I kid you not. I met up with my friend Ryan, and we went to McDonald's together. And he was embarrassed to stand in the line and order with me because I shit you not. I walked to the counter and said, "Can I have eight spicy McChickens?" And I sat there and I ate all eight of them. <laughs> I don't know why. But I really, I just enjoyed it. I guess. There's this uh, guy. <laughs> you, had your, you had your White Castle moment where you're like, I have to ingest. Yeah, dude, I was like, I need food. to inhale it. I went full on Kirby. I became a fucking chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you are what you eat. Or your St. Peter's one. Do you guys know the guy? He, I got to look him up. Um, John Sedano. He has a million subscribers on YouTube. He, so. <laughs> he's, I'm sorry, but he's really big. He's really, really big. And he has this horrendous neck beard and every video is filmed like from this perspective. Mm. And his thing that he does is, <laughs> he does of like, I, I'll just, I'll just play it. So the title of this video, I got to change. <laughs> This is so funny. This is the title of the video. Nirvana smells like teen spirit vocal cover 2017 official in parentheses, right? And every, (laughs) this is what he does. Get rid of my background. I'll have to go after this, but. You can hear it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Somebody once told me the world is Okay, so um, Evanescence, bring me to life. Um, let's see, Oasis, Wonderwall. I love how you've already watched all of these. <laughs> 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 the the official the cover in a. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's like every video, that's how it goes. But the it's, thing you that's said right about up there with the four chords song, <laughs> like the every thing... song follows these four chords. Every song can be uh, all star. <laughs> The thing you said, <laughs> the thing you said about going to um, McDonald's and ordering all those spicy whatever. When he got 
like a hundred thousand subscribers. He went to talk. He like live streamed it. He went to Taco Bell, and I think he ordered like seventy tacos, and he ate them and used his hundred thousand subscriber <laughs> plaque as his plate. <laughs> you know, uh, n- next time, next time you you do this, if it's just next weekend, I gotta I gotta get some soft tacos from Taco Bell. I'll, I'll show you my party trick. <laughs> That sounds strange, I promise you. The top but all of this is trick, went really fast. It's not as exciting as it sounds. Are you just going to eat it without chewing? Kind of. I, <laughs> I still chew it. I shit you not, though. I can eat an entire soft taco from Taco Bell in a single bite. <laughs> all right. Is well, that no chewing? We'll it's have good. to stay tuned, I guess. <laughs>